What is going on everybody? Welcome back to the channel. Uh, today I wanted to talk about my insurance costs on my Tesla Model 3. It's a pretty hot topic. A lot of complaints that insuring a Tesla is incredibly expensive. Um, so I wanted to share with you what I'm paying, uh, kind of what I went through to get my payment lower and how I'm actually saving money on my insurance now. And also we're going to talk about possible uh, Tesla insurance in the future. So let's get into it. So in my video I did before where I was talking about my most expensive bill, you know, for my Tesla was the registration. And uh, that is the most expensive single bill, but I guess uh, if you look at per year, my insurance is more expensive than that. Uh, and I did have a couple uh, questions in the comments asking me to talk about my insurance for my Tesla Model 3 because a lot of people know that it's expensive or they hear it's expensive. Um, so that's why we're going to talk about this now. So to start out, I'm in Michigan, so this will be pretty specific to Michigan, but at least you could use this information to maybe compare what you're paying um, and shop around at different insurance agencies. So my car before this one was a Ford Focus, a 2014 Ford Focus. I had bought it used with about 12,000 miles on it, and I got my insurance through Allstate, and that was recommended through the person I bought it from, and uh, the insurance is actually really good. It was a fair price. I had good coverage you know, for everything. I had full coverage on the car um, and non-insured coverage. So I stuck with Allstate um, for about three years while I had that car. And when I went to pick up my Model 3, I got a quote from them on how much more it would cost for my Model 3. And I was a little scared because of course this car costs a lot more um, already than the Ford Focus and insurance, you know, you pay more for a more expensive car, of course. And I had heard Teslas were really expensive to insure. And so I was actually almost worried that this would kind of be a deal breaker where the insurance would be so much more, I wouldn't be able to buy the car. Well, luckily, it actually only ended up being 16 more dollars per month um, for my Tesla versus, got some kind of traffic jam here. Autopilot is handling all that for me. It was only 16 more dollars a month versus my Ford Focus. So I was really excited about that. Um, I sign up for six month plans and I pay them monthly. And so I was like, great, I don't have to switch insurance, I'm just gonna stick with that. So for my Tesla Model 3 with Allstate, they were charging me a little over $600 um, per six months. So about $1,200 or $1,300 a year uh, for my insurance. And you know, again, I thought that was fair, so I just kind of stuck with them. Well, when my six month term um, kind of expired and they sent me my next kind of six month bill, my chunk, the insurance was gonna almost double. It was going up to over 900 per six months. It was like 930 or something like that. I have some screenshots I'll show you. And so I was like, whoa, what is, I mean, it overall I, our insurance just about doubled because uh, the Equinox, we also have insured, they, they increased the rates on that too. And so of course I contacted my insurance guy and I was like, hey, what the heck is going on, blah, blah, blah. And he was like, yeah, the, the Model 3 is going up. That's, that's just the way it is. There's nothing I can do. So of course I immediately went out and started getting quotes from other places um, like Progressive and Geico and, and things like that. And uh, Liberty Mutual actually was the cheapest out of all the quotes I got. And I sent that you know, to my insurance guy and I said, is there any way you can match this? And he like didn't care at all. I don't know, I mean, I guess they're probably used to people moving around to different insurance all the time. And he just didn't care. <laughs> he was like, no, we don't do that. <laughs> and I said, okay, then I'm leaving. Um, so I went to sign up with Liberty Mutual but when I called, the quote I got online didn't match um, the the actual price I was going to pay. And I don't know, you know, they like check. I've, I've had um, two accidents, I think, and neither were my fault. I was rear-ended one time, and then the other, my um, mirror got hit like in the parking lot. I wasn't there, but they counted as an accident. Um, and so neither of those were my fault, but of course they're still on the record. And so I don't know if those popped up and it increased the rate or, or what it was. And, and I told them, well, that's, it ended up being more than the Allstate. And I told them, that's too much, I'm not gonna go with it. So then, Geico was way more expensive than even Allstate was, like the new $900 per six month rate. And then I went to Progressive, and theirs was cheaper than even the Allstate before the price raise. So here's the Progressive um, screenshot, and so they were close to 500, a little over 500 for six months for me. The Equinox was cheaper as well, and so this was like obviously a no-brainer. So the cool thing now is my insurance for my Model 3, believe it or not, is actually cheaper 
than what I was paying for my Ford Focus. But so if you're looking into insurance, you know, for a Tesla, if you want to buy one or if you just got one and it's a little more expensive than you thought, um, first of all, if you're looking to buy one, just email your insurance and say, hey, I want to switch this car I have now over to a Model 3 and tell them whether it's long range, all wheel drive, performance, whatever. And then they'll, they'll tell you, you know, probably what you'll pay um, or at least really close to it. And you should also email other places and just get quotes. Um, now, I was surprised that the quote they give you online um, di didn't match for some of them. Like I said, with um, Liberty Mutual, it didn't match what the online said. Uh, the home and the car actually ended up being way more than, than they originally quoted me. But so you just got to shop around. So another thing about Michigan is Michigan is really an expensive insurance state. I think we're actually one of the most expensive states for insurance. Um, so most people watching, hopefully you're paying less than I am. Um, and you know, that would be a good thing. Now, of course, if you're looking at a Model S or a Model X, the insurance is going to be more uh, because they cost more than a Model 3. Now, you do get a lot of discounts uh, for insuring a Tesla. So, of course, in my focus, there were not, none of these kind of advanced safety features of, um, you know, all the cameras looking everywhere and accident avoidance and emergency braking and, and blah, blah, blah. So a lot of insurance companies give you discounts for all these features that are in the car, you know, the radars and the sensors and the cameras. These things keep you safer. They help prevent accidents so the insurance doesn't have to do anything. They help minimize the damage in accidents so that insurance has to pay less if there is one. Um, and so that's actually a bonus in the Tesla cars you're less likely to get in an accident because of all the safety features. Now, the downside of that is if you do get in an accident, Teslas are really expensive to repair. And part of that goes into, you know, kind of the parts issue. It can take a long time to get parts um, for a Tesla. Now, it's not always the case, but you do hear a lot of the stories where, you know, someone just gets rear-ended and then they're waiting two or three months for a bumper. You know, it's a little ridiculous. And, and during that time, you still need a car, right? And so on my insurance, which I would suggest everyone do all the time, um, I got rental coverage. If I'm in an accident and I don't have my car, then my insurance company will pay for a rental. Now, the bad thing about that is they only pay for a month. So if my car's out of service for two months, I'm gonna be paying for a rental for one you know, of those months. But to add that to your insurance, it's really cheap, so there's really no reason not to have it. Now, some of these insurance places have this kind of creepy thing where they'll be like, oh, download our app and we'll watch everything you do while you're driving and then we'll give you a discount. And I personally am like not into that. Um, you know, it's just weird. I don't need like all this stuff on my phone watching me. I have enough with, you know, probably like Google and whoever else is on my phone. So I never opt into those. Now, the reason I'm, I'm bringing that up is because it can give you a small discount with Progressive, it, it really wasn't much, so I, I, I'm not missing much. But Tesla, um, Elon Musk actually talked about at the autonomy day that Tesla is going to start offering insurance for Tesla owners. Now, this makes sense from a full self-driving standpoint, because if these cars in the next year or so, which I'm a little skeptical, but let's, let's say they, they become autonomous and this car is driving around without me in it, then obviously Tesla is you know, responsible at that point. I'm not in the car. I'm not controlling it. I said, go pick up this guy and it goes by itself. So Tesla needs to be in the insurance game. They need, to, they need to be able to insure their entire fleet. And so a good start to that is to be able to insure um, us drivers now. You know, we can sign up and they can start doing that. Now the autonomy day, I don't know, was like two or three months. I don't remember how long ago it was. Elon said it would be offered in about a month. And like everything, it's late. You know, I mean, pretty much everything he says is late. That's okay. We're used to that now. I've heard that it's being held up because they're working with a partner, you know, they're gonna partner, let's say with, with Progressive or something, and then it'll go through Tesla, but it's actually insured by Progressive or something. The reason I brought up the apps monitoring your driving is because Tesla has so much data on its drivers. Um, if you go in the settings, you can see uh, there's all kinds of agreements, which you can opt out of, you know, you don't have to send them data. Um, but, you know, I, I let them take the data because it is anonymous and it does help kind of, you know, improve the experience of the car and it helps the software updates and everything. And so if you get insurance with Tesla, I mean, they're gonna see every little detail about your drive, about the way you drive. Um, and it's good and bad because the cars are fast and they're fun. And if you're taking off all the time and always hitting the accelerator, they're gonna wanna charge you more to insure you, right? I mean, of course. Now I don't do that too much, so I don't think I care. Oh, there's another Model 3. Um, so, you know, I don't think I care too much about that. Um, but for some people, like I said, I, I didn't want it on my phone. Um, with Tesla, for whatever reason, I'm okay with it. Maybe that's a little hypocritical, but that's honestly just the way I feel. If Tesla's insurance was cheap enough, I 
for sure would switch right away. I want them to insure my car before anyone else. Now, I don't know how it's gonna work with, you know, a lot of these insurance places give you discounts for multiple cars and homes. Like, are they gonna insure my house and, and my other vehicle as well that's not a Tesla? Um, you know, I don't know about any of that, but, but I would be really tempted if this insurance comes out. I really think I would want it. The other thing I've heard that's pretty interesting is in some states, you know, Geico will be the best one. Everybody in whatever state will go to Geico for their Tesla. Uh, for me, Geico was like the most expensive out of any of the uh, quotes I got, uh, which was pretty crazy. So you really, you definitely have to shop around and you have to find which insurance is gonna be the cheapest for you because there's a lot of factors that go into deciding it. Your age, your driving history, what kind of car you got, whether it's the performance version or the standard range. So it's, it's just such a personalized thing. You know, nobody's gonna be able to give you a straight answer of this is how you get the cheapest insurance. Um, but the best way to do it is just make sure you shop around. Don't settle for any of these. Um, and just switch around as much as you need to. They're always get, gaining new data. And, and I feel like as the Model 3 is out longer and there's more of them on the road, they're gonna see that you know, maybe these cars are in accidents, you know, just as frequently as any other car, but hopefully they're gonna find that the occupants, the people in the car are kept safer than other cars, you know, in a similar price range. And then they can give discounts because one of the most expensive parts of auto insurance is uh, medical coverage in case you injure somebody else or in case someone injures you or uh, your occupants in the car. Unfortunately, insurance is just one of those things we have to pay for, um, but hopefully you can kind of get the best deal you can by shopping around and uh, finding an insurer that gives you a fair price for your car. Uh, comment down below, let me know what insurance you're paying now. Uh, thanks for watching, if you're not subscribed, you know, get subscribed, and uh, I will see you in the next video.